Hello, everybody. I'm no, I'm your host, Noah Greenblatt, along with my two partners, Andrew Ark and Will Myers. And today on our NFL preview show, we're going to be talking about three big topics. Which quarterback's going to have the best year? Which player who came out of the draft is going to be rookie of the year? And probably the big question everybody's asking in the NFL, Super Bowl predictions. But the one thing I have to say about Super Bowl predictions, don't you hate how before the season even starts, before the season starts, they think about Super Bowl? I mean, you should be thinking about, you should, you should just be thinking about the schedule. No, game one. Ga- Thank you, Will. Game one. Let's start off with our Super Bowl predictions. Andrew, you first. Um, I think it's going to be close. I mean, it's hard to predict at the beginning of the year because there's a lot of good rookies. So We're not on rookies yet. We're focusing on Super Bowl right yeah, now. Yeah, in Super Bowl, I think it's going to be the, maybe the Saints and... Ooh. Um, the Saints, yeah. the Saints, really? We call okay. them the Patriots. Really? Okay. I I get that they have Drew Brees and he's won a quarter. He's and won Jimmy a Super Graham. Bowl. But here's the thing. Drew Brees is it's 40 years old. He's older old. than Peyton Manning. He's, he's older than he's older than Peyton Manning. He's 40. Drew Brees is 40 years old. By the time by the time next year rolls around, he's gonna pull his hamstring, probably done something to his neck. And probably, no, broke his back. and probably strained something in his throwing arm. So he's 40 years old. I don't think he's winning a Super Bowl this year. My opinion, probably, and I'm not just saying this out of fan favorites, I'm going to go with, I think the Bears have a good shot to make the Super Bowl this year. Cut. Jay Cutler. <laughs> Jay <is> Cutler. Crap. <laughs> he just crap. He is horrible. Well, here's the thing. I... It doesn't. It doesn't mean just. Cor- you just. You just like the Bears. Yeah. The Bears I said I'm not picking out a fan. Yeah, favorites. but you were. The quarterback. You were. isn't the only thing that makes the team go. You got to. You need to have a good defense. The Bears have that. They don't have one. Sure, yeah. they don't have one of the best, but they have pretty good defense. And they have, in my opinion, I think one of the probably the second or third best receiving core in the NFL. You have Brendan Marshall and okay. Martellus Bennett on your outside. And then you have Earl Bennett, and I'm trying to remember who their uh, fourth tight. I'm trying to remember who the other tight end is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, but on the Seahawks defense, they won't get anywhere. Oh, and now you no, it's correction. You have Alshon Jeffrey and Brendan Marshall on that side. Martellus Bennett, and uh, uh, oh my God, yeah, you're thinking. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking. Okay, I haven't watched football in a while. All right, we might. Will your prediction and. Then we'll move on. What? Your Super Bowl prediction. Oh, I'm calling the Patriots. Okay. Second topic, which quarterback is going to have the best year? This is actually hard. You got good quarterbacks that came out of the draft. You have Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, you have uh, Johnny Manziel. He's going to do horrible. Johnny Manziel. Every, don't, don't even say, if you say Johnny Manziel, I will kick you off the show. Because everybody knows that Johnny Manziel is going to fail. He's too, he's too skinny. He has, he has, like, noodle arms. He's too skinny to play in the NFL. As soon as he gets hit with one of those 235-pound linebackers, he's going to... like 400 pounds. Exactly. He's going to break something. So, in my opinion, I'm going to go out on... I'm going to go out on a really big limb here and say... Don't do Teddy Bridgewater. Probably... Don't. Wow. Well, I can't remember any don't. quarterbacks in the NFL. Don't. Don't. Not Peyton Manning. Don't. Russell Wilson this year. Just because they won the Super Bowl. No. We got, um, we guys, we got one minute. We got to wrap this up. Come on. Hurry I up. mean, I'm a big Colts fan. I don't just, think Andrew Luck will be the best quarterback, but pick. I think he'll be one of the great quarterbacks. Okay, just pick. I think. I'm going Tom Brady. I don't know yet. All right, Tom Brady. Tom Brady. All right, our last topic we got to make this really quick. Rookie of the Year predictions. Who do you think? Um. Oh, that's a wrap. Big man, so. Okay, did, did, did the Anthony Thomas go out of the draft yet? Did he go out to the NFL? I think he did, right? Yeah. Um, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna say Manziel. I don't think Manziel's I don't think Manziel's evolved yet. Just like probably Teddy, Teddy Bridgewater, probably Teddy Bridgewater. He can move the ball, he can throw, he's pretty good. Yeah, I think Teddy Bridgewater, but All right. he's still gonna Ladies get and gentlemen, hurt. we gotta wrap this up. We're gonna take it back to the studio. Live from our NFL preview show, I'm Noah Greenbaut with Andrew Orko and Will Myers. Thanks for watching. Tune in tomorrow.
Hi, I'm Aaron Heisen, here with JAP Sports News, along with my partners Peter Ling and Jack, Jack Judikoff. Today we'll be, we will be talking about the NFL preview. Who do you think will win MVP? Well, there's a lot of good choices out there. There's young players, there's old players. I'm going to go on the older side. I think that Peyton Manning will have it again with, an ama- with Wes Welker out there and the good offensive line and Manny, Manny Ramirez after that safety in the, in the Super Bowl. I think that Peyton Manning will still have it, and I think that he's going to have another amazing season this year. I think the MVP is a quarterback's um, award to lose, and I got Aaron Rodgers coming back and winning the MVP this year with his awesome receiving core. Okay, I have a long shot in winning. I Actually, no, it's not a long shot. I have Adrian Peterson winning. Hmm. I think he will not get injured for once, and he will run for 2,000 yards like he used to, and I think he will win MVP. Okay, so sem- second topic. Who do you think is the best defensive, defensive team and the best offensive team this year? Well, defensively, I mean, you could argue – I mean, a lot of people would say that Seattle is the best defensive team. I don't think so, because I think that one that sometime that they're gonna someone's gonna get hurt, and then they're just all gonna collapse. And then, but I think that um, that Houston is the best defensive team this year, just because their defensive line is just insane. They have Clowney on one side, and they have J.J. Watt on the other. It's just going to be unstoppable for any offensive line to handle. Um, as good as Houston's defensive line is, the Niners' defense overall, very great. And I think that they will be a dominant defense once Navarro Bowman comes back in the middle of the season. So my pick is the Niners. I agree with Jack. I think Patrick Willis will step up with Bowman and Smith out for – or Smith is suspended. Um um, I think Willis will step up and get a bunch of sacks, and Carlos Rogers will get some interceptions in the secondary. Okay, what team do you think has the best offense? Well, not trying to pick fan favorites or anything, but I think that the Eagles will. I mean, they have Nick Foles, who came off an amazing last season last year. They have LaShawn McCoy, who came out with an even better season. And if and then when LaShawn McCoy's not in, they have Darren Sproles to back him up, who's another amazing running back who can go out for a pass also really well. And but wide receiver wise, they lost um, Deshaun Jackson, which is gonna help, which isn't gonna help. But they have um, a bunch of other we have players. A oh yeah, we do. Hey guys, this is Johnny from Long Beach. I was wondering, who's gonna be the surprise team this year? The team that maybe might not make the playoffs, but they're gonna improve a whole lot from last season. I think the Raiders may because. Matt Schaub has some experience, and even though he's not at the peak of his career, he still will lead them. And their defense has been getting better with Charles Woodson and Cleo Mack now as a rookie, so I think they'll have some young talent and some experience to help them through the season. Yeah, I think that the, um, I can agree with the Raiders, but I also think that the Vikings will. With Adrian Peterson coming back, I think he'll also have an amazing year. They have Bridgewater, and I think that they'll end up really good this year. I agree with both your guys and even maybe the Texans, but I have the Browns with Manziel uh, or their other quarterback, who I can't think of Brian right now. Hoyer. Yeah, Brian, Brian Hoyer. Hoyer. And their new incoming talent, Justin Gilbert, who they got in the draft, and they just re-signed Joe Hayden. And they have some veterans coming in from the 49ers who know how to win. So I think they can make a huge leap this year. Okay. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Welcome, Johnny. Okay, thank you for watching. This is it for Jap Sports News. I'm Aaron, and these are my partners, Peter and Jack. Hi, I'm Caleb Crane, and this is Joseph Upperman on the Cover 2 radio show. And we're going to talk about Johnny Manziel. Well, um, I think that Johnny Manziel is a little overrated. Uh, um, DNs and linebackers are faster in the NFL, and they're better. In college, he was running over them, but now they're way better. So he's not going to have that speed that they saw in college, so he's going to not be as good. Yeah, I think he'll have some problems on the field as well as off the field. Um, I think that in college, I heard that his coach and his dad were keeping him really busy, 
And now in the NFL, he has some more independence. So I think he might have some problems off the field, maybe with partying, getting drunk, maybe girls, all that stuff. And we, it looks like we have a caller on the line. Hey guys, this is Johnny Manziel from the Cleveland Browns. Okay. Yes, Johnny. I really, I really don't agree with what you guys are saying about me. I think I've got lightning speed. I've got moves like Jagger. Well, and you I'm don't. I'm pretty awesome on the football field. I can outrun anybody out no, there. No, I think, I think. Yes, that's think why you need to be hit like very Jagger, hard. And you have moves like <laughs> moves like runners. You know what? You know, I think I'm gonna win the starting job by week two. Okay. I'm going to take over, and the Browns are going to the playoffs because of me. Um, they will go to the playoffs, I, but you will have a broken leg and a broken arm when I they think get that there. Once you, you will get be hit, hit down by linebackers and DNs, and you won't be as fast as you think you are. Quarterback pads are not as big as, like, regular pads, so you want to sacrifice your speed for your safety because if you want safety, just wear big pads and you will be slow. Or if you want to be fast, one hit on the quarterback pads that you could you could end your end up in your with your season in a suit with a sling on your arm and a cast on your leg watching from the sidelines all right guys thanks for the motivation i'm gonna prove you both wrong out on the football field watch me this you year. won't but um, it's okay if we expect diff many things from you johnny thank right, you for bye, your guys. call Okay, and I think, um, yeah, I liked what he said, but I think he still can doesn't have what it takes to make a deep playoff run yet. But we have another caller on the line. Hey, guys, this is Ricky from West Los Angeles. Hi, I was Ricky. wondering, who is your sleeper team this year? Who's a team that's going to surprise people? Uh, maybe one of those teams that, that picked up a guy in the first ten picks or just pick up some guys in the offseason that's going to really shock the NFL this season? I'm going to say the Cleveland Browns. They have a lot of new picks this year, and they're pretty. They're getting stacked with good rookies from college, so I'm going to say the Cleveland Browns, and I think they're going to get to, like, first or second round of the playoffs. Uh, Yeah, I think it might be the Arizona Cardinals. I've been a fan for since Kurt Warner was playing for them. And I think that um, they last two, two years ago they were five and eleven. Last season they were ten and six. They improved five games in the toughest division in football. Uh, I think they can only go up from here. I mean Carson Palmer, however old he is, has proved himself that he can be a substantial part of that team for two, maybe even three years until his contract expires and he re will retire. So, so do you think the, the Cardinals can win the division or win the wild card, or are they going to get third place like they did last year again? I think they can. I think that um, both of the wild cards could come from the West. Like So I think the Rams might be the only team that doesn't make the playoffs in that division. I think the Cardinals will make one of the wild cards and the Seahawks or Niners the other. But I think the Cardinals will probably be a game or two behind the Seahawks, and the Niners will probably be like very good, thirteen and three, twelve and four. And I see the Cardinals making it to the winning one game in the playoffs. What do you think? Um, I think that yeah, but I think the Cleveland Browns are gonna have a great season. They might not go to the playoffs, but they will have a better season. So, this is. Cover two with Joseph Upperman and, and Caleb Crane. And Hello and welcome to the Rex Effect Show with with me, Rex Quayle, and my and my other host, Charlie <laughs> and Mac. Uh, today we will be, we will be making Super Bowl predictions who, based on last season and preseason moves. Who do, who do we think will be will be in the Super Bowl? Um, my predictions will be. Uh, the Seahawks and maybe and I don't think the Broncos will make it, but I think they'll do well in in the playoffs. But maybe maybe we don't want to think about. Okay. Um, I think um, well, I think the teams that will do good that will make the playoffs. I like the Packers. I like the Patriots. It's but they're well. different. It's do well, do good. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> um. Uh, it will be the Packers and Patriots in each conference. That's one. 
Uh, I like the Broncos and the Seahawks. That's two. Um, <laughs> how are you telling uh, um, <laughs> uh, Like what you said, I like the Packers and the Patriots. Uh, the Seahawks, um, as always, they have a good shot. The Broncos, they have a good shot too. Uh, especially knowing coming off of a Super Bowl season, mm-hmm. not winning it though could bring them down. Okay, what do you think about um, all the um, Packers players getting injured and now they're coming back this season? What are you thinking? Like, uh, Aaron Rodgers broke his collarbone, yeah. Randall Cobb f- fractured something, and Clay Matthews. <laughs> Clay Matthews broke his toe about three times. And um, so, what do you think about them coming? Pro- out? It's probably going to be huge for the Packers. Well, they- that's why I think they will make it to the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, what I'm saying is. Um, Jared Boykin got time to um, do some wide receiving because Randall Cobb was out. Yeah. So and he did great. So I'm excited to see if he gets a starting role uh, or a big so role on the Packers. So it looks like we have a call up. Hey guys, this is Bobby from Kenosha, Wisconsin. Hello. I, w- I was wondering, who is going to be a surprising player for the Packers this season? A guy you got to watch out for if you're a Packers fan. Like BJ Raji. <laughs> He's 370 pounds, <laughs> and he can play fullback. I don't know if he's that surprising, <laughs> though. He's pretty good, though. Um, Jared Boykin, for me, since Randall Cobb with the injury last year, Boykin got some time to show off his skills and show Green Bay and other teams what he can do. I'm sure people have forgotten about him now with that blowout in the Super Bowl. But, I mean, he's the guy who's going to come out of the shadows and scare the heck out of teams. It's B.J. Rodgers. I think it's, it's going to be Rogers. Aaron Rodgers because I think he'll he'll – Drive. I don't know if that's a surprise, you know. Well, yeah, but I mean, what? I mean. Is he gonna win the MVP though? I think. I think. I think Aaron Rodgers will win. Yeah. I think Aaron Rodgers will have a. I can't predict. I can't predict any MVPs because the season hasn't started. I don't know what they did. I don't know squat. All right, so. Uh, it looks like we had another caller on the line. Sorry, we're gonna have to cut you off and uh, bye. Bye, Bobby. Bye, guys. The funniest oh, Super Bowl, man. probably, no offense to those Jaguars fans, but probably ja- uh, the Jaguars and the Seahawks. Minus the Browns and the Seahawks. What Johnny Manziel just, like, plays running back and <laughs> quarterback, should. but only Browns. That will be funny. So, like, a better version of Tim Tebow. Yeah. So, like, like so the Seahawks and Jacksonville Jaguars so would be, would be Brown- very boring because... It was. It would be like last, last, last year's Super Bowl. Well, if the Jaguars except, ten times worse. Yeah. Well, if yeah. the Jaguars made it to the Super Bowl, they're pro- obviously doing good. Yeah, so, but uh, it's still going to be a blowout. So if they just point. put someone in the Super Bowl, picked out of a hat, and it it's still going to be a blowout. All right. Um. We're gonna wrap it up here. Yeah. yeah bye, Bobby. Thank I mean, you never said your name, genius. <laughs> what bye. was it? Okay. Yeah. What bye. Um. Um. Okay, so. Uh, this this has been a pleasure making the show, and and oh this is me Rex Quayle and Harry Steinhouse and <laughs> Mac Mac and Charlie and this is the Rex Effect Show. See you next time. There will never be a next time because this show is so bad. <laughs> Hi, my name is Aaron Goldstein, that's Sam Swartz, that's Jackson Resin, and today on Three Man Weave, our topic will be the NFL. Now, Jackson, who do you think will win the Super Bowl? Well, um, last year it came close to being Seahawks. Uh, well, Seahawks did win it, but it came close for the 49ers. They almost got in, in there. In the, in, but personally, I think that... I think that the Broncos will go back because I think they're the best in their conference, and the Seahawks will go back. It'll be a close. It'll be close between them and the Niners, but I I just think that I just think that the Seahawks are a better team. So, do you think Peyton will have a good year? Um, Peyton is aging, and he can get injured a little bit more. That's what happens. But, but. Peyton is Peyton Manning, and I think he will have a good year. How about you, Sam? I say it's going to be the Broncos returning again, and I say it's the 49ers of the NFC. And uh, I'm predicting the Broncos because they had a great season last year, and I think, they, I think they'll win it this year. And I pick uh, the 49ers because they, they were peaking last year in the playoffs, and it's going to be an interesting Super Bowl this year. Do you think that Kaepernick will have a good year? 
Uh, sort of. I don't think it's going to have the best year. I think last year was a pretty good year for him. And, yeah. Our next topic is, Jackson, who do you think will be a, a star surprising running back this year who had either a tough year last year or was injured or we didn't see much of? Give me your thoughts. Well, um, a surprising running back, I would have to say um, C.J. Spiller. He didn't have... He didn't have a great year last year. Um, he got injured a couple times, but in the past he's been pretty good, and I think he can have a good season again. How about you, Sam? I'm going with Reggie Bush this year. He, he looks really good running the ball, and I think he can really do it this year. Nice. Uh, another question is, do you think Adrian Peterson will have... Oh, oh, we, ha we have a caller. Oh, hello? Hey, guys, this is Aaron from Santa Monica. Hello. I was wondering, who's going to... What, what, what running back in the NFL is going to disappoint this season? The running back that had a great season last year, but it's probably going to do a, have a bad season this year. You want to go first, Jackson? Sure. Um, I actually think that I actually think that uh, Marshawn Marshawn uh, Lynch. I don't think he's going to have a great year this year. Um, just after all, he's after all the great plays he's made uh, last year, I'm, I just sort of have a feeling. I have no evidence or proof to prove that. I just sort of have a feeling that when, as Russell Wilson's taking over this team, he's making the big plays. It doesn't leave enough room for um, Lynch to make those plays. I totally agree. I think Wilson will carry the team. But Sam, what do you think? I say Maurice Jones drew this year after he got traded uh, from the Jaguars to the Raiders, especially being on the, that Raiders team. They don't uh, really have the best team. They're obviously the team that always ends up in last place. He's not going to have a great year this year, especially with all the teams they're playing. They play, Raiders play in London this year. It's going to be a huge schedule for the Raiders. How about Adrian Peterson, guys, starting with Jackson? Do you think Peterson will have a good year? I mean, now with that Minnesota offense, it's kind of shaky because you can just pretty much predict a run because they don't have a great quarterback. Do you think he'll have a good year? Your thoughts? Um, I think he went a little bit downhill last year, and I think I think he's still going downhill a little bit. Um, I don't know if it's age or the rest of the team that's affecting him, but let's be honest. Adrian Peterson is a great player. He is great. Um, but sometimes you can't always be great every single season. And that's what I think the case will be this year. And one more question for you, Sam. Do you think the Seahawks defense, and last year they were uh, they had a tremendous defense. They, they're energetic. They're, they get pumped up. They have a great coach in Pete Carroll. But do you think they'll be as good as last year or better or worse? Give me your thoughts. I think they went on a roll last year, and I don't think they're going to go to the Super Bowl. I say not as, not as great as they played last year. All right, thanks, Sam. And that will wrap it up for our conversation today. That's Jack Resin, Sam Swartz. I'm Aaron Goldstein. Thanks for watching Three Men Weave. Hello, I'm Rex Evans here on ESPN Triple Threat. Um, I'm here with my partners, Dylan Taylor and Jack Berenson, and we're going to talk about football predictions. Let's start off with the NFC, Jack. Um, I think uh, in the NFC East, I have the Cowboys. Uh, in the NFC South, I have the Saints. Um, NFC West, I have the Seahawks. And NFC North, the Packers. I think they all can make it to the playoffs. I think those are great predictions. I can't really disagree with those. How about you, Jack, with the AFC? Dylan. Or Dylan yeah. with the AFC. AFC East, I have the Patriots. Brady, I think they could make a comeback here. Maybe their defense will do better. Uh, NFC North, I have the Bengals. Maybe Dalton can prove himself, but I think A.J. Green and their defense is good. AFC South, I have the Colts. I think Andrew Luck's going to have a better year than he had last year. And finally, AFC West, I think the Broncos. Peyton Manning, great offense, and they add a few pieces to their defense. I, those are good reasons, but I still don't think Dalton doesn't have enough experience to lead the Bengals. I'm going with the Ravens in the AFC North. Now, let's turn to the MVP. Wow, this is a tough one. Um, McCoy, LaShawn McCoy, uh, best running back in the NFL, in my opinion. So I think he'll win it. That's a good pick, but it, I think the Patriots are going to have a great year, and I think that means Tom Brady's going to win the MVP. Yeah, I agree with Dylan. I think LaShawn McCoy can win the MVP because 
Uh, they don't have great passing. They lost to Sean Jackson, and Jeremy Macklin usually gets hurt. So um, I think Sean McCoy is going to have a great year. Um, yeah, that's my MVP. Looks like we have a caller. Um. Hey, guys, this is John from Fort Wayne. I was wondering, who do you think is going to be Rookie of the Year this year? Oh. Uh, get back to me on that one. Um, I think maybe uh, Carlos Hyde or Bishop Sankey, those two running backs, because they were the top two running backs picked in the draft, and I think they're the best, they're the best young rookies for running backs. I've actually got a sleeper with the Patriots. I'm not sure how good a year Shane Vereen, ha Vereen will have, but I think he'll get injured, and I think James White will have to step up. Yeah, I'm going to go with Sankey. I think he'll make the biggest impact. He'll be the starting running back in Tennessee. I think I'll have the biggest impact on his team. Maybe Clowney, but yeah, I think Sankey. Thanks, guys. Okay, who, who do you guys think will win the Super Bowl? Oh, man. I think the Denver Broncos. I think come back here for Peyton. He's looking for the Super Bowl, and he, he might be better than ever this year. Uh, I think the Seahawks can get back to the Super Bowl. Maybe the 49ers, because they were very close last year. And uh, the Broncos are always the toughest in the AFC because they have Peyton Manning. And um, they're always a great team coming out of the AFC. So I think the Broncos can get back and maybe win. I've got the Saints, actually. I mean, I've always thought they're a great team. They're always going to be amazing on offense. They've made a couple key upgrades on defense, and I think overall they're going to be the best team this year. Well, that's it for us here. Uh, I'm here with Dylan Taylor and Jack Berenson. And this is ESPN Triple Threat. Hi everybody, I'm Matthew Phelps, alongside Levi Port and Tristan Montera, and we're here with your three-man squad report. Our first topic of the day is which NFL team made the most moves during the offseason. Levi? Um, I think the most, the best offseason moves were the Denver Broncos. They really struggled on defense, and the uh, Seahawks embarrassed them and really showed them that. They added some key pieces in TJ Ward at safety, DeMarcus Ware at defensive end, and uh, Aqib Tlaib at cornerback, and I think those additions are going to really help their defense and maybe even be able to take them back to the Super Bowl and finally be able to overcome that bad defensive team they had last year and make it much better with their explosive offense. So we will see. All right. Tristan, what do you think? I, I agree with you and I don't agree with you. Part is that they, they got key players, but then they got to put it all together to make it work. But also the Colts, by getting Trent Richardson, they made a big move there by boosting up their offense with their running game. They didn't have any running backs before, so they boosted their running game there. All right, we agree with you. I agree with you here, and I agree with you there. Um, our next topic is the Super Bowl prediction for this year. Levi? Um, I think in the NFC, you have to go with the Seahawks. They've retained most of their defense, uh, amazing defensive players and most of their offensive players. Their team is pretty much the same, and I don't think there's any other team that can go up against that offensive squad and that defensive squad. Russell Wilson is just is becoming one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. He's getting up there. He's a rising star. And their defense is, they don't, Richard Sherman, of course, he's uh, amazing, and everyone loves to hear him talk. And they're just too, too much of a team team. None of the, those players are superstars. No one thinks that they're the best. They all work as a team, and they're just too good. In the AFC, I think it has to do with the Patriots. We're not sure about Denver with their defense, even though I said before they got better. We're not sure about them. So I think the Patriots, we know that Bill Belichick is going to lead them far, and Tom Brady is still as good as he was a couple years ago. So I think it's the Patriots. And I, But I also like the Steelers. Um, they made some good additions on their defense. I think they're a sleeper pick there, so we'll see how they do. All right. Tristan? In the, I, in the AFC, I don't think the Patriots – We'll get there. Their defense is flat out horrible now. They don't have anybody on defense that can guard any wide receiver, anybody. So and so I think in the AFC it's going to be the Colts. They they got defense and offense, so they'll put that together so that, to get into the Super Bowl. From the NFC, I think it's going to be the Seahawks because they got they returned all their players and they were really good last year. All right, good input, Tristan. It looks like we have a caller on the line. Hello, guys. This is Neymar from FC Barcelona. I wanted to know, uh, is this show about football or 
football. That's what I'm wondering. And is FC Barcelona going to win the Champions Cup this year? Um, we don't think FC Barcelona will win because all of the players will be bitten by the time that the season actually starts by Luis Suarez. And we're talking about football here, okay? So thank you, Neymar, for calling. Okay, football. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Hope your back feels better. Gracias, gracias. All right, our last topic of the day is our favorite rookie. Um, I think I'm going to have to go with Sammy Watkins. I think he is just such an explosive awesome offensive player, and he's going to add such excitement to that Buffalo offense, which is so terrible right now. My only question is, will EJ Manuel be able to get the ball to him? And will he, you know, how will Sammy Watkins um, transition to these NFL defenses that are all, that are all really good and they know what they're doing? I think he's very explosive. And I also like Kelvin Benjamin of the Carolina Panthers. We'll see. All right. Tristan? I think Blake Bortles will, if – He's trying to get a starting job, but I think he will get it, and then he'll do really good during the season. So how about you, Matthew? Um, well, you know, I kind of agree with both of, you, both of you, but we'll see as the season unfolds. For my colleagues, Levi Port and Tristan Montera, I'm Matthew Phelps. Thank you. Hello guys, welcome to Fun Squared. I'm Matthew Fawn. Nathan Jang. I'm Samantha Fawn. First of all, two Fawns and a Jang. As you can see here, he's in a Fawn witch right now. But um, first to get it started off on our topic, NFL and college. First we're gonna talk about college and cause the NCAA has made this new thing called it's now it's more like the NCAA tournament. The playoffs we're gonna talk about who do you think is um the four teams that will make it to the final four. My four teams are gonna be Florida State, Florida State, Alabama, I'm gonna do a sleeper pick and go Duke, and let's get Auburn. The reason for that team is Duke's my sleeper pick, but if you think about it, every, Duke got a bunch of recruits because last year Duke did well and everybody's going to Duke now because, I mean, it's grade school, but this is Duke's prime right now, so I think they, that's, who, that's my like sleeper pick and to watch out for. And you know Florida State has Jameis and um, Auburn. They had a good season last year, and the – when you have a good team, you got a lot of recruits, and Alabama's always good. So now let's send it up to Matt. Well, um, I think it's going to be my sl my sleeper pick is UCLA. I mean, they have star power, like Brett Holmey, getting some new recruits. I mean, they have lost a couple key players, like Anthony Bars, like um, to the Vikings first round, and Shaquille Evans, their great wide receiver. And um, my three other teams are, it's going to be Florida State, Oklahoma, Auburn, That's and three. those are my four. I have, to, I, have, I have both Florida State and Auburn on my list. I think that if Jameis Winston comes back to Florida, as you know, he's, he's, he's interested into the baseball. Jameis, Jameis. Jameis Winston, you That's know. That's his he's nickname. A, Jameis is interesting. <laughs> hey, anyway, Jameis is okay. We got a caller. Hey guys, this is Jameis Winston. Oh, Jameis. what a coincidence! I'm so glad you guys are talking about me right now, and I'm so glad that all three of you have the Florida State Seminoles going to the college football playoff. And hopefully, by the end of this show, I want to hear from all three of you say that Florida State's going to win it all because we're the best. I'm the best player in college football, and I got the best teammates behind me and the best coaching staff. So with all that said, go Knowles. Well, Jameis, just to say to you, I think it'll be, um, I don't think you guys will make it to the final. Just, I think, I think, it, I think the final is going to be Oklahoma, UCLA. I think the final is going to be, I think the final is going to be the Seminoles and Oregon. I put my four picks for the final four is the Seminoles, Auburn, Oregon, and Stanford. I they're many impressive teams. They haven't lost all their players. They still have 
all their good like quarterbacks. Marcus Mariota. Marcus Mariota yeah, is still in Oregon. And I, I just don't think Alabama can do it without A.J. McCarron. Yeah. He was gone. Now that you're saying that, like, I can I'm going to, like, kind of change my picks slightly. So, but for me, I think it's going to be Florida State versus Oregon. And, um, but the other two teams are um, Auburn and, um, who was my other team? I said Auburn. And Duke. I think Duke, they just, they, they have people, none of them really went to the draft, and they all went. So um, let's go to the NFL really quickly. Who do you think, um, as a transferring, talking about people who might go to the draft, let's talk about the NFL. Who do you think are your rookies to watch out for? Mine is Sammy Watkins. You have to look at him. He's so fast, he's so speedy, and he brings a lot to the table. Mine is actually going to be um, Khalil Mack. This there's nobody who um, got picked fourth overall by fifth overall, excuse me, by the Raiders in the first round. He is just aggressive, and when somebody has the ball, he'll make it come out of you. you. Better watch out for him. I think it's going to be Jadavian Clowney, picked first overall by the Houston Texans. Houston's just having a crappy defense last year, and I believe that the, he's going to make a huge impact, and he's going to get him. Okay, now the Super Bowl prediction. I think it's going to be the San Francisco 49ers this year. If you just look at how aggressive they are, and the Seahawks lost Golden Tate, I think it's going to be them this year. I think it's going to be New Orleans. I think they're up to their best right now. They've got some good defensive power, and they got that offensive power with Drew Brees. I think they're going to power through. Um, I'm going to say it's probably going to be – um. The 49ers are the same, so I have to agree with both of you. But my sleeper pick is going to be the Green Bay Packers. The Green Bay, they just have a lot with Aaron Rodgers and Jordy Nelson. And thank you for tuning in to Fawn Squared. With and Matthew Fawn, Sam Fawn, and Nathan James. And thank you, Jameis, for the call. Thanks, guys. Hello and welcome to the Pac-12 preview for the 2014 season. I'm John Sosa along with Sam Cohn and Edward Hawley and we're going to talk Pac-12 football today. Our first topic today that we're going to talk about is how do you replace some of the good players like Marquise Lee that left last year? Edward? Uh, you know, like for USC or like well, any team? All over the Pac-12. Well, for I think UCLA, for losing Anthony Barr, that was a big loss on defense. But you still have Miles Jack and then you have Zach. Zach Whitley coming in for the linebacker. So, I mean, it's going to be hard to replace them. They're, Miles Jack has a year of experience, and Zach Whitley is, like, he's a freshman, so he's still young. But I think that they're, they're going to be okay. Uh, speak, so for Marquise Lee, it's kind of hard to replace players like him. You just have to find a player that can fit that spot that he created. So... He played very well at USC, so it's going to be hard to find some recruits that can fit his role. Well, I think the biggest loss in the Pac-12 last year comes from a team that's more of a sleeper. Arizona lost two big players. They lost their quarterback, B.J. Denker, and they also lost Kadeem Carey. They don't really have a running back to back up Kadeem Carey last year. It was really run Kadeem, run Kadeem, and go, go, go. And B.J. Denker was a quarterback that now you have a freshman – a redshirt freshman that won four straight titles in Las Vegas, and then you have Jesse Scroggins, who proved nothing when he was at USC. So I think Arizona's going to have a tough year figuring out who to, who's going to replace those players. Our next is going to be, who do you think your Pac-12 player of the year this year will be? Edward? Oh, that's a tough one. You have a lot of players that could be, like, you could see uh, – Brett Hundley have another breakout season. Cody Kessler for USC might have a breakout season. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell right now because there's a lot of players in the Pac-12. We have Marcus Mariota from Oregon. Uh, Tyler Gaffney, I don't know if he won the draft. Yeah, he went to the yeah, draft. He went to the draft. Yeah. Uh, but that whole Stanford team is good, so, yeah. Um, so for USC, this player named Anthony Brown, he changed his name to like Heisman123 Brown on Twitter. So I think he's pretty confident. But I wouldn't say that. I would say someone like Brent Huntley. And yeah. Well, I'm going to go with uh, 
Javoris Allen, Javoris Buck Allen. I think he's going to have a big breakout year last year. Lane Kiffin didn't really use him, and he was he came in with Ogeron, and he had a big rest of the year. I think he's in store for a big year, and I think he's going to be one of the best players in the Pac-12. I think we have a caller coming in. Yeah. Hey, guys, this is Jim Harbaugh from the San Francisco 49ers. I was wondering, what are you guys' thoughts on my old team, the Stanford Cardinals? Do you think they could win the Pac-12 this year and maybe even make it in the college football playoff as well? I'm going to talk first about this. I don't think Stanford I don't think Stanford wins the Pac-12 or gets to the college football playoff. I think Stanford's defense got really hit last year, not only losing your defensive coordinator, but also losing three or four key guys on defense. And also your offense is pretty depleted too because – I'm gonna stop you there. Their defense is one of the best defenses in the Pac-12. But you they run the, the the traditional style. They they like come at you like every time. They get by the offensive lines. I think they have a good chance of beating Oregon and making it to Pac-12 conference and maybe even the BCS playoff. Three names that you have to put out there: Shane Scove is gone, Ben Gardner is gone, Trent Murphy is gone, and also Ed Reynolds is gone. Those four guys were the heart and soul of their defense, and they're gone. And you got to replace them with freshmen and sophomores. I think their defense is going to be pretty depleted this year. Yeah, losing players to draft and other things is pretty tough, especially when you're one of those big colleges that have good players. You're going to lose players, so they're going to need freshmen to keep that defense rolling. Um, and our last topic is going to be who do you think the best recruiting or the best recruit for this year that's going to play right away is going to be? Uh, I mean, USC has a bunch of recruits that, uh, that can definitely have a great season this year, even though they're young. You have a good coach, Steve Sarkeesian, who could prepare them both physically and mentally. And then you look at UCLA, Zach Whitley, uh, good line. He can be a good linebacker, and then Jalel with dude, and yeah, yeah, I agree. Zach Whitney is a great recruit for UCLA, especially with Juju. I'm forgetting his last name. Juju Smith. Juju Smith for USC. They could have a good year. I have two guys. Probably this one guy probably won't get it because he's not going to play for a good team. But Shea Fields. He's going to replace Paul Richardson at Colorado, and I think he's going to be the number one receiver there this year, and I think he's going to have a big year. And then yeah, more, of a realist, more of a realistic pick would probably be Adoree Jackson in the return game at USC and also getting in at corner and wide receiver. Makes sense. So this has been Pac-12 Preview Show. I'm John Souza for Sam Cohn and Edward Hawley. Good night. Hello, my name is Ben Goldberg alongside with Harrison Rosenthal and Lucas Dotson. We are here for an NFL preview show brought to you by ESPN. The first topic today is our Super Bowl predictions for the 2014-2015 NFL season. My Super Bowl prediction, I'm going to have to say, is the Carolina Panthers. And for me on the day, I don't mean to be biased being a Bay Area person, but I, I just have to go with the 49ers. Their wide receiving core is just too deep. And I think Kaepernick this year will have more experience. And I don't think he will be developed into a top QB any time in his career. But I really think he will get the experience after the, the Super Bowl defeat and the NFC Championship defeat. After that awful throw that he put up to Sherman, basically, in the end zone, I think he will develop. And I think it's 49ers. What do you think, Harrison? I'm going to go with the New Orleans Saints. I think the thrilling core of Drew Brees to Jimmy Graham will easily help them win. And I think their defense has improved this offseason. I'm going New Orleans over New England. Now on to our next topic of top performing rookie. My top performing rookie, I'm going to have to say, is JV and Clowney. He has, he's, I think, the best defensive rookie in the draft. Being drafted number one shows a lot, too. I say it's Clowney also. He just shows so much potential in the way he goes. He can read the offense, read the line. He can break through that. I don't know if you guys remember, but you probably do, the hit that he had in the Outback Bowl versus Michigan. That was a nasty hit. That means he can play pretty well in the NFL. He I can lay down some nice I hits. think we have a call coming in. I think it was the guy who got hit. Hello? 
Hey guys, this is the uh, Michigan running back. I'm still, I'm, my head's a little swollen from that hit still from last year. But I, I, I do agree with you guys on Jay Van Clowney just because I'm a little afraid of him. But who do you guys think is going to be the rookie that is not going to have a good year? It's going to have Johnny a, a Manziel. Bad year this year. I say Johnny, Johnny Manziel. Manziel. Everyone, it sounds like everyone agrees with that. Yeah, I, I agree with you guys Play. too. Thank, thanks for uh, thanks for having me. No problem. No uh, problem. I'm, I'm gonna go better. with my top performer. I'm gonna go with Sammy Watkins of the Buffalo Bills. Even though the Buffalo Bills don't necessarily have the best QB and the best receiving core, I think Watkins can easily develop into a number one, number two receiver in his career, especially when he's starting as a number two with Buffalo going number third overall in the draft. Now on to our second to last topic. Who's a bust and who's not? Who do you think is a bust? Who do you think's not? Who do you think is a bust or not? <laughs> I say Manziel bust. He he's just too much of a hype. Gets with like twenty different girlfriends in the last like month, maybe even a week. Oh, Man, I know. I tell you, I wasn't and one. then <laughs> and then I think not a bust. Today being cloudy. I'm gonna have to agree on you there. Bust total Johnny Manziel after what he did with like the fake autographs, selling autographs for like thousand bucks. That was just stupid of him. And I honestly think Sammy Watkins is not a bust. He's going to do really good. I go with, I'm actually going to go with Blake Bortles for my bust. Even though he's from the Central Florida area, that's where he went to school at UC, Flor UC Florida. I think he does not have the best views for Jacksonville. I think he does worse than Matt Barkley did in his rookie season last year. And I go with Sammy Watkins, who is the top performer right here. Okay, now on to our last topic. How will Michael Sim handle the media that is thrown at him? I think the beginning, like, he, he will prob it will probably affect him and how he plays, but I think later on in the season, things will calm down and he'll be fine by the end of the year. I think he'll be just fine. He's actually handled the media pretty well at training camp. I've been watching. He'll be fine. Now on to our last really quick topic. Who do you think, what, who is your sleeper team of the year? I say the Miami Dolphins. You saw that last year. They came out and they showed that they can win some big games. So I think Dolphins. I go, I'm, I'm going to have to say the Chargers. I'm going to go with the Arizona Cardinals. I think they're still in the tough NFC West. I think they grab one of the wild card spots. Malcolm Floyd, Larry Fitzgerald, Cardinals. That'll be it. Thank you for listening to our ESPN NFL preview show. Bye. Bye. Hi, I am Eli, Eli Lesser with my partners, Michael Morone and Solomon Koliako. Today we are giving you on Me Sports a preview of the NFL season on AM670. So, guys, who do you think will win the MVP this year? The MVP, um, well, Peyton Manning won it last year, so I do think another quarterback will win it this year. I'm going to have to say Colin Kaepernick. I think Colin Kaepernick is going to win the MVP this season. The, the 49ers have so many wide receivers, it's like incredible they have well vernon davis is their tight end who's an all-star michael crabtree stevie johnson Mar i think mario manningham still um they still got do they have anquan bolden anquan bolden and, and i mean they have um now they have some they got a running back in the draft so i really think that offense is going to be pumped how um, about you mike uh, i i i really agree with you there but yeah i agree with you okay 100 percent who do you guys think will be the most surprising team? The most surprising team, I think, I actually like the Cardinals. The Cardinals have a decent team. They got Carson Palmer. They got Larry Fitzgerald. They have um, more, I think they they have a, more, a few more wide receivers coming up, and their defense was great. They, re, they got, they uh, re-signed Patrick Peterson to a longer deal. So I think, I think the Arizona Cardinals could surprise some people at the wire, at the wild card spot. How about you, Mike? Um, you can go first. You can go. Okay. So, <laughs> my uh, surprising team, or, yeah, surprising team, um, I would have to disagree with you about the Cardinals. Okay. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to agree with you. I, I agree with you 100%, actually. Do you have a reason? As I think it over. Yeah. Um, 
Um, so yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> Come on, next I question. I just don't know anything about football. Guys, who do you think will be the worst QB of the season? Johnny Manziel. Wait, I think we have a caller on the line. Hi guys, this is Ryan Leaf calling from my beautiful big house in Temecula, California. I was wondering, who's going to make me look good and have a really bad season this year? So, basically, who's going to suck worse than Ryan Leaf? Um, Nobody. Nice. <laughs> it's, I'm sorry, Ryan, it's true. It's the way you put <laughs> okay. it. Okay. Well, it's your words. Okay. I don't think it will. I think in terms of a starter... Oh yeah. I think, gonna be, I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be EJ Manuel, the guy, the the quarterback mm -hmm. of the Bills. He I don't think he's gonna have a very good season at all. I think he's gonna get in, either injured again or he's not gonna have anybody to throw to. They traded Stevie Johnson to the 49ers, who is their number one receiver, and then you just have Stevie Watt, Sammy Watkins. I don't think that's enough for them to do anything. So. I got the I got Michael Vick as the Jets. Um, even though I'm a huge Jets fan, Michael Vick. He's just, he's awful. I mean, how, do you lose your starting spot when you've been, you've been a starter for God knows how many years, and then, <laughs> and then, okay, you're traded to the Jets, and you're, now you're going to lose your starting spot to Geno Smith, and you're just, and he's just going to, he's just so, such a bad player, and it's not like he's, he has a great team with him, so, yeah, I think it's Michael Vick. Last question. Who do you guys think will win the Super Bowl? Oh my God! <laughs> I I think it's gonna be the 49ers. The 49ers are gonna go all the way and they're gonna beat some booty. <laughs> they, I mean, Colin Kaepernick's gonna have an MVP season. He has so many offensive weapons, and the, the 49ers' defense is just unbelievable. Even with the loss of um, Alden Smith with uh, legal issues, uh, they still have a good defensive line, and they're they. I think they could go all the way. How about you, Eli? How about you? Okay, um... I'm the host. Oh, yeah, that's true. I forgot. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I'm... I'm gonna... I'm gonna agree with you. 49... 49ers. So, yeah. Oh, there, we have a caller on the line. Uh, hello, this is uh, Michael Vick from uh, the New York Jets training camp. Excuse me, did you really talk smack about me? Yeah, oh. you suck! Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, I yeah, do. I yeah, do. I yeah, do. yeah, you, you suck! suck. Like, you even suck! Though, even though I'm a Jets fan, you suck! Are you let my dog down again? Yeah! <laughs> I'll just yeah. rifle! Well, guys, this has been <laughs> a wonderful. This has wonderful. been an interesting day here on NFL Preview. I am Eli Lesser with Michael Morone and Solomon Koliako on Me Sports AM 670. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Aaron Goldstein, that's Sam Schwartz, there's Jackson Resin, and today on Three Man Weave, this is the episode of the Champions. First, we're going to go basketball, the NBA. The Cleveland Cavaliers have a great team, a stacked team. But Jackson, do you think it takes only one year to, to build up? Do you think they can just go out and win? Give me your thoughts. Um, I think it will be sort of... It will be sort of tough for them to win be, um, because the bench has to play too, and I'm not I'm not a huge fan of their bench. I don't I don't think that they're very dominant. Um, they lot they, they do have LeBron. They do and, have LeBron and Kyrie and Kevin uh, Love. As well, they right will now. they will they will have Kevin Love, but they will also lose Anthony Bennett and Andrew Wiggins and a first round pick, which could. Uh, take away some of their chances to have a good bench player. Who do you think will win the finals? Um, I think it will be tough, but um, I I actually do think the Cavs, even though their bench is not great, because the Spurs. I know everyone's been saying this over and over and over again, but the Spurs are getting old, and Tim Duncan. He's a great player, but I think. The young Cavs team can wear him out. He can wear Parker out. He can wear Ginobili out. And Kevin Love's just great. I think he might be able to work work Duncan inside. Sam, yeah, what do you think? So uh, going back to what he said about uh, the bench has to for sure step up if they really want to do it. But I don't think 
I think it's going to take about a year or so for the team to develop before they win a championship. I think they'll make the playoffs, but they'll lose in the first round like the Clippers did. Uh, Clippers are a great team, but they... First again, round? Just, yeah, the Eastern the Conference round. is weak now because because uh, the Nets lost Paul Pierce. Um, all, also, the Pacers lost Lance Stevenson, Evan Turner, and Paul, Paul George. George. Right. And that's that's really key. And, and the... The Wizards are going to be good, and the Bulls have their girls back. But yeah, is, but that's just my opinion. I know, but is Pau Gasol and Derrick Rose gonna? Are they in Joakim Noah gonna stop Possibly. their big? Their big three, you think, is gonna stop the best big three? Well, well I, you um, know what? I think none of your predictions, guys. I think it's the San Antonio Spurs yes, every year. Exactly, exactly. Because every what, year, what hold on, hold on, every year. Hold they on, are on, doubted. On. They are old. They are. They are not quick enough. They are not skilled enough. They are. They're. They're Kevin not what they used to LeBron be. James but every year, it doesn't matter. Every year, it doesn't matter. Every year, they prove all the analysts, everyone, that they can win ball games, and that's why I think that they will win again. Oh, and, all, and okay. also, no, but, uh, it's my turn to talk now, guys. Um, so. About the, going back to the Spurs thing, I say the Spurs, if they if they can, what he said, I disagree with Jackson, where he said they're an old team, and if they can beat the Miami Heat team last year, and they were a young team. The Heat are too. also old. No, they're not. LeBron, it, how old is Le- LeBron James? LeBron's around 30. Yeah, besides 30, and that's not. Holds Wade. Well, w- Wade's like 31 or 30. So? Maybe even that's 30 average. Three. Still, so if they, if they, that's, they can, no, but no, oh, Hold on, no. guys, we got a caller. Hold on, hello? Hey guys, this is Blake Griffin from the Los Angeles Clippers. I don't think you guys have mentioned the Clippers once so far. No, I, and I think we got a great shot of winning the title this year. I'm young, I'm fresh, I'm feeling better off my injury. The thing and is, Chris Paul, and we got a great uh, uh, cast behind me and a solid bench to go with us. What do you think? Blake, 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 you're not a playoff team. Sorry. Yeah, no. you're a regular season team. Well, Sorry, Blake. Well, we can step it up. Maybe cut I- the line. Um, I'm going back to the Spurs. The Spurs and the Heat. The Spurs, if they can show that you can that they can beat that Miami Heat team, that Miami was going after a three-peat, if they can show that they can beat their team, I say Tim Duncan wins another championship and then he retires to tie Michael Jordan. I let let's let's move on to hockey. Uh, no, sorry, uh, football. Okay. Uh, in football, they there are some great teams. Specifically in one division, the Seattle Seahawks and the San Francisco yes. 49ers, that division could be better than any other division in foot, which it, it, is. it is. Who do you think will come out of that division and win the Super Bowl? Uh, uh, this, possibly. Uh, I say that the 49ers will. I, really? No. Um, I know Seattle had their dream year last year, but they're gonna. I think they can make it back. I, I, I. For once, I am a 49er fan. But I'm going to disagree with you, Sam, because Seattle Seahawks, if you look at how they get pumped up, it's crazy. They are so into it. Richard Sherman is the most. He's into it. They're all one unit. Pete Carroll has done an amazing job there creating the one unit. Russell Wilson, tremendous. Marshawn Lynch, tremendous. All right, well, that'll do it. For Three Man Weave, that's Jackson Resin, Sam Swartz, I'm Aaron Goldstein. Thanks for watching the Champs Edition.